in this section, section 1.1.4, we'll be looking at parallel vectors. Uh, we already know of a notion of parallel. We'll say that two lines are parallel in R2 if they have the same slope. And we could think of the slope as giving us the direction, so if two lines have the same direction. The concept of direction is nice because we can bring it and make it work for vectors in Rn as well. So we'll say that two vectors in Rn are parallel if they have the same direction, but also if they have opposite direction. That's something that you don't really have with lines. Um, two lines will have the same direction. We don't really have an arrow in one, on one side of them. So same or opposite direction. And then we'll write this. We'll write that V, two parallel lines, W, that says that would be red V is parallel to W. All right, in example 1.1.7, I'm asked to give two vectors parallel to V. Um, all right, let's start. Uh, I want the same direction, but I, have, I can have different lengths. So something like this would work, something longer would work. I can also flip the direction and shrink it if I wanted to. So the length doesn't matter and the direction needs to be the same or the opposite. All right, so we need to have a good algebraic definition so we can apply it and to specific numbers. So two vectors, V and W, are parallel if there's a constant k so that V, well, I can stretch it, I can flip it, I can shrink it. So really, any scalar multiple of W would be parallel to W. And then we'll add the opposite. So either V can be obtained by scalar multiplying W and K, or W can be obtained by multiplying K and V. All right, let's see how that works in the following example. Example 1.1.8, are the following pairs of vector parallel? I have V and W. I want to know if V is equal to KW. All right, so V is 15 minus 927. KW is minus 10, 6 minus 18 times K. And so I'll need that 15 is minus 10k, minus 9 is 6k, 27 is minus 18k, and if I solve for k in each of them, so I need all three to be true for the same value of k, same real value of k, so if I solve for k in each of them, the first one will give me 15 over minus 10, which is minus um, 3 halves, the second one will give me minus 9 over 6, which is minus three halves. And the third one is 27 over minus 18. That's minus three halves. As long as those three are the same, then the vectors are parallel. So I can write V as minus three halves of W that means they're parallel. Let's try the same thing with the next one. Is it possible that V equals KW? All right, so let me do the same thing we had over here. If you look at what I'm doing is I'm taking the ratios of V, sorry, no vectors, VI over WI. All of those ratios need to be the same. So let's test the ratios. So V1 over W1, that would be 2 over 1, that's 2. So for this equation here to be true for the first component, I'd have to take k equals 2. Now for the second one, I would take minus 4 over minus 2. Well, I get 2 as well. So k equals to 2 would work for the first and the second. 
Let's check the third. For the third, I need 5 over minus 5, I get minus 1. So if those three numbers, those three ratios are the same, they're parallel, as soon as one is different, then V is not parallel to W. All right, let's try this third one here. So I want to know if V equals KW. I'm going to try to test the ratios. So that means solving for K in all three components, or four components here. But let's try V1 over W1. I get 1 over 0. So the ratio doesn't, doesn't make any sense here because of W1 being 0. And so that's an issue. So let's go back to V equals KW. W is just the zero vector. So K times the zero vector, that's the zero vector. And so this will not work. Well, that means they're not parallel, right? Wrong. That meant that this first part of the definition doesn't work. Let's try this one. Is it possible to write W as KV? In this case, we're testing the opposite ratios, if you want. And so, is it possible to find a case so that the zero vector is KV? Well, yes, zero times V. In fact, if you look at those ratios of W1, if I look at W1 over V1, I'm going to get 0. And if I look at W2 over V2, I'm going to get 0. And so if one of the ratios, one way of looking at ratios doesn't work because you have 0 in the denominator, flip it. Look at the other one, and you'll see if it works or not. And so in this case, uh, we do have parallel vectors. In that case, we had parallel, um, not parallel vectors. But now, this is interesting. Right? We found that this vector v here is parallel to the zero vector. And the argument that's right here used nothing of that vector. That tells you something very intriguing. The zero vector is parallel to every vector v in Rn. I'm going to use this notation because it's quite helpful. And so we'll use it every now and then. If I write that rounded E, it really means just N. And that's what I'll say when I read it. All right, so this takeaway is cool because it tells you that the zero vector, in some sense, is in every single direction because it's parallel to every single vector.